Hi, in this quick start video, I am presenting Satel BI, an integrated platform for semantic business intelligence that bridges semantic web and business intelligence technologies. Here you will be looking how to use Satel to build a semantic data warehouse and apply all the queries on it. In this demonstration, we use the population data set for Bangladesh Census Data 2011 as a use case. The population cube is composed of three dimensions, the living position dimension, residence dimension, and geography dimension. And we have only one measure, and it is number of people. The levels of each dimension are organized in different hierarchies. The first uh, step is to design the T-box of the semantic data warehouse. Next, creating a box from the semantic data warehouse, and then apply OLAP queries on it. As you see here, Settle is organized into three layers, definition layer, ETL layer, and OLAP layer. User can create a new target T-box or edit existing target T-box by clicking here. Let's see how to create a new one. Click new T-box button. Type a name. Choose the desired format and directory to be saved. The very common prefixes are written by default. You can create a new IRI or edit the existing one. Prefix name and IRI. Okay. The leftmost panel allows you to create a different OWL and data warehouse constructs. Let's create a dimension. Select prefix, type name, level, okay. Now create a measure. Select prefix, type name, and level. Then create a cube. Select prefix of the cube. Type a cube name. At measure from the measure list, you can select aggregate function. Then add a uh, measure component. And select dimension from the dimension list. Select the cardinality and add the dimension component. Click OK. In this way, we can create different constructs. The corresponding triples for the constructs are generated internally and shown in the metal panel. Now you can save it. Now let's open the target T-box to explain in our use case. Here we can see different multi-dimensional constructs, dimensions, hierarchies, level properties, I mean level, level attributes, cube, and cubert. A cube is defined in terms of fact and dimensions where a cubit is defined in terms of facts and levels. We can also add new construct or edit it. The rightmost panel shows the description of the selected construct and it also allows editing and adding and editing the components of the construct. For example, if we want to change this range, we can do it by clicking the update button and selecting the desired value. So once a target is defined, the next task is to map between the sources and the target. You can select source and target files to be mapped. The 
first task is to create a mapping data set. Therefore, each source and target pair will be a data set. Under a data set, you can create concept mappings. Let's map between the target cuboid data set and source facts concept. Select the relationship between them. Now the instance level mapping. You can select whether all instances of the source concept should be mapped or a subset of the instances. How to create the values of the IRI of the target instances? It can be a source attribute or a source or as same as source instance or incremental or an expression. Here we want to make an expression by concatenating all the properties of source concept. The next task is to map in property level. Here we can choose under which concept mapper the property mapper will be created. Select the target property. The values of the target property can either be same values of the source property or it can, it can be an expression. Now we can save it. The corresponding triples for the mappings can be shown in the mapping file editor. The mappings can also be used for intermediate mapping. Intermediate mapping is used for the transformation on RDF literals. Let's open the mapping file of our use case. Here is the mapping file of our use case. Yeah. So the mappings are defined in our own vocabulary. You can see the different components of the file in the leftmost panel. The rightmost panel allows you to edit the component, mapping component. So the next task is to create the ETL flow to populate the target evox. We can create a new ETL from the file menu. The left hand side is showing all operators. It includes operations for extracting data from semantic and non-semantic source, RDF wrapper. It converts non-semantic to RDF. Tbox deriver derive a Tbox from non semantic source, Tbox from RDF Avox. Sometimes uh, uh, the RDF file only contains the assertion, so this operation uh, derives the Tbox from that assertion. Instance generator, level entry generator, that means it creates level members, fact entry generator, update dimension construct. It addresses the slowly changing dimension issue. Your load operator is used to load data into a triple store. Triple store here we use generate. So you can drag and drop the operators. Control flow is used to connect the operators. The paper we showed how the operations are connected using an ontology. Let me show you one example how it works with fact entry generator. The input can either be a CSV or RDF. The path of the source file. Select a mapper location. That means the mapping file uh, we did from source to target. Provenance graph location. 
Killer Provenance uh, graph stores uh, the IRI inform IRI generation information. Target T box location. And select the target AVOX location. Yes. So if all the input are given correctly, the color of the operation will be changed. Now we can run it. It will take some time. The status. Status of the ETL in the status bar. So let's open the ETL of our use case. Here is it. So now we we have our target T box. We have now our target A box. Now let's uh, open our OLED player. To trigger or to issue some OLAP query. So, this is our OLAP interface. User can create and run OLAP queries on their target. The target can be accessed either from a local file or through an endpoint. Let's load our target from local files. Take them some, some time to load. So, as soon as the files are loaded, we can extract the cube structure from it. Cube structure contains dimension, corresponding hierarchies, and the levels of the hierarchies. And uh, uh, you can see here measure with aggregate function. Then user can create OLAP query to explore and aggregate measures at various level of details. Let's make a query. Here we have three dimension: living position dimension, geographic dimension, and residence dimension. The corresponding hierarchies are shown under a submode of dimension node. Let's create the query we want to aggregate to the measure in administrative unit one level. Uh, okay, two level. Administrative level two and living position resistance type from resistance hierarchy and position all from living position dimension. So let's uh, run. Okay, get a result. Uh, no, you must select that as okay. So you want to see some and average. So don't do that. Yeah. See here we can see the result at administrative unit 2 for in gravity dimension and residence type either rural or urban and living position all that is we can see some is some and average. Yeah. Let's apply some slice and dice query. So we don't want to see an administrative two level. We want to see it an administrative level one. And here you you can select uh, by the prop filter by on property value. For example, here we can by this one or administrative name. We want to select for shell Polar division result. So here we see that this is rural and R1 